Hey everyone, today's it is about when he kills a kid accidentally when he's in petrol. So, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going. Cats are keep heads in, in their silence. There were no stomps or a rush, I'm home. Not even a kiss to your temple. A hand on your lower back. You understood why, so you keep your distance. Left hand and sealed. The smell of iron and ash clung to him. Soot and blood smattered all over. He won't look away from it. When you try to catch his eyes, he refuses to let them from his boots. You want him to say something. To a shout, like the wild animal he is, untamed and unhanged, filled with dangerous rage. You want his screams so loud, you can feel them in your skull. Like aching, like fire, because that's what's normal. That's how these days unravel. He looks like he's been stripped out of all that fire, a dying little spark of a star that once burned so brilliant, so bright. He's a hollow husk of himself right now, a remnant, and you know he will crumble soon enough. Katsuki keeps his head down, plods right past you, disappears into the bedroom. Then the gauntlets and click. It startles you how they crash with the floor, clatter and clank together like delicate glass bottles because it doesn't bother to place them down with care. You resist going to check if they're broken from the fall to scold him for being so ruthless. His shower is long, nearly 30 minutes, 25 longer than usual. You remain where you're called at the corner of the couch. You keep the TV switched off, so he won't be reminded. You listen for screams or sobs or being fussed against the walls, but there aren't any, a bad sign. So when the pitter-patter of the shower halts, you're at a loss. You don't know what to do. You've learned to know what he needs, though. Leave him be. Give him time. Give him space. Leave him be. Give him time. Give him space. Leave him be. Give him time. Give him space. Repeat, repeat, and repeat. An hour passes, and eventually, you do wander in. Because it feels terribly wrong to sit and wait and hear nothing. To be given nothing. You just need something. So you peek past the door. And you find Katsuki with his back to you. Curled up in the bed like a toddler. You tap the door as you step inside. There's Misa out there. You say. If you're hungry. You know he's not hungry. But just in case he wants to eat. Or if he wakes up from the nightmares tonight and decides he wants to eat. Or if he wakes up tomorrow and wants a quick meal, just in case. The wanted. His voice is rasp, deep and subdued, probably from yelling earlier when he... I'm here, you know? You move on to the bed, behind him, and you touch his shoulder. You can't talk to me. He shrugs you off and sits up. Still facing away. Nothing to talk about. Maybe you should have been more patient. You should have given him more time because it looks like he might stand up and leave. Nothing to do now. He says, but then he slumps, heavy. Can't even save a single person. That's not true. I saw what he did. We all saw it. What was the matter? He wraps around and you can see him. Finally. His red eyes, puffy eyes, the tears at their brown. How they demand to overflow. She's dead. The kid's dead. It's, he shocks and aghast. It's all my fault. But then let her reverse, already glistening on his cheeks, and you wish you could kiss him, to tell him everything will be all right. You touch him instead. This time his hand where the clutch is his feet. He did everything he could. Don't touch me. Her claws away, and you feel you've burned him, scared him away with your light. He whispers, and don't say that. Then what can I do? Katsuki scoffs, and it's clear he's falling further, self-destructing with a sad little smile. 
He burrows his eyes in the heels of his palms, his elbows and his knees. You can leave. I'm not leaving. Well, you should. He shakes his head. I don't even know why you're here with a shady person like me. I killed the kid. You lash forward without his permission. Before you know what you're doing, you wrench his head from his hands and refuse to let go. It's terrible what happened today. You say, and you lean in hard, nudge his ear with your lips. You hope he will listen, but no one can save everyone. For once, Katsuki doesn't brown with rage at this. Does he even scream or yell at you that yes, he can? Yes, he can save everyone because he's a hero, and that's what heroes do. He jolts against you. Your skin freshly wets, and you know he has finally hurt you. Shit. He shocks out. His nails go down your front. It's not even fair. Katsuki's cries are brutal in their silence. Sobs drag through him, not in voice, but in body. He trembles like he's cold, clings to you like you're his only worms. His son. He fits the back of your shirt and muffles, shocked breathes. You hold him through it, the ugliness of right now, how raw he's been strapped. As you look at him, you've reminded of an open gash, the sharp cut of him, desperate in his need to make a mess. You bring him back from that blade, though. You stitch his pieces back together. I love you. You say when he's calmed enough to hear, no matter how broken, you come home to me. I'll always be there. The first that your back tightens, he digs his face deeper. Remind me why, please. I have thought of every reason not to, you say, and I still love every part of you. You know his replica of, you unwrapped all his ugly, mangle parts. You've seen what haunts his dreams. You wonder how he carried all that for so long, alone, no one there to hold him. If loving him is run and work, then let you be the one to bear it. Katsuki peels his head up to look at you. Lash is wet and clumped. You're such an idiot. I love you too, so much. You smile softly and press your forehead with his. I know. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And check my other videos if you can. So, goodbye.